course. Yeah. One's me. Um, I'm today in particular, but having trouble holding space for all the stuff that's going on in the world and not reacting to it. Oh God, I hear you. Yeah. It's not. It's not anger. It's not fear. It's is sadness or I think you call it soberness but it's it's really hitting me hard today and I, I'm not sure if that has to do with being a little depleted from a week ago or it's yeah just... well it's it's just chaos out there like you know it's I hear you um I don't want to stick my head in the sand but I I'm right. just out of equilibrium with holding it and right is is there symptoms that are manifesting or are you just like internally emotionally mentally you're just like yeah 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 uh common complaint by the way um you know and i'd say big picture is is um is it's a changing of an age it's a changing of things that are going on and it's a rebooting of of things but things come to the surface before that can happen it's hard to watch sometimes um even though big picture happens uh we are still living in the here and now and it it's hard I remember one time master choa made this comment he was like you know if if a soul was smart, you'd align yourself with the the divine plan and ride the coattails of the divine plan in the next 10,000 years. You know, you'd incarnate as many times as you can because you could rapidly spiritually grow and develop. And so he's like thinking it like this. And he goes, so you should try to incarnate as many times as you can. And we're all just quiet, like looking at each other like, okay, note to self incarnate as much as you can but like uh, that's such a big picture that it really doesn't help to hear it now and so uh, uh sometimes it's just a matter of perspective but this this is what i would say there there's a couple different things you can try um So one is the use of valerian and valerian, not so much because it's um, like a sedative. One of the things that valerian is really good for is it's a restorative to the uh, homeostasis mechanism. You know, it's a lot of change. It's a lot of um, weirdness going on. We're having to adapt our perspectives and, and, Things aren't always the same from week to week, month to month, you know, quarter to quarter, year to year. Over the last four or five years, there's just been so much change. So the use of valerian, um, yeah, you know, I'd probably use it at night, but you could use it during the day as well. Um, it's similar to spikenard, but it's a better restorative than spikenard. Um, it just helps to restore the homeostasis mechanism which is the balancing aspects of your of your physiology emotions and mind um there's that component and is that inhalation um, yeah inhalation you could put it a little bit like on your feet um in more extreme cases a couple drops in water and take it that way but inhalation will actually work um the other thing that i would say is hmm. give me a second here. I'm just kind of processing this for you.
you know, in all the different kits and things, I, I would think you would have some form of aloes. I do. Um, uh, or assemblage point. My new favorite. Yeah, I, I would do the arms and legs and the organs of blood purification. Um, I'd probably do the organs of blood purification first and then do the arms and legs and then the spine. And the the thing that there's different reasons why you would work those particular components. Um, but if we come back to all the shifting and changing that's happening in the world. The, the arms and legs and uh, the gut are, are tied to what you would call the peripheral nervous system. And it, that, that divides up into two segments. It divides up into a segment that um, affects the skeletal muscles and then um, another aspect is that it would hit the smooth muscle like of the, of the gut and respiratory tract, but mostly the gut. I, I mean, not mostly, but like of the, uh, the gut. And, you know, we were talking about a little, little bit over, I can't remember, it was over the weekend or, I don't know, all the lectures blurred together, but... Th those two areas in the peripheral nervous system, they're, they're parts of the nervous system that are, are not um, protected by the spine and the skull, right? So they're basically kind of exposed aspects of the nervous system. And in that area, there is that it's very, very unconscious, but it's it's like a stress of being vulnerable or the stress of injury. Like these areas are a little bit more sensitive to just the craziness in the world. You know, you'll feel it more in those parts of your nervous system. And then eventually it affects how we feel and then how we think and, you know, all that. And it's not like we are mentally like grinding on it. Your nervous system is a little bit like, eh, Eh, there's craziness out there and you you know you perceive it and then that part of your nervous system goes we're all exposed here we gotta we gotta you know do something and so working the the organs of blood purification handles that vulnerability that stress of vulnerability in the gut and then treating the arms and legs uh, treats it in the, the more skeletal aspects of it. And then you just kind of go through and unwind the aspect that has to do with the spine, which is not part of the peripheral nervous system, but it is like a deep release that can happen from the nervous system. I find that when, when an environment, you know, be it a household, work, or whatever it is, is is like chaotic and unstable i always kind of like to go to that organs of blood purification in the limbs and treat it and you know different different oils do different things through those areas but here you just want to kind of diminish that stress you know that things are crazy and chaotic but at the same time in your circle they're not as crazy as it is out in the world. And so hard not to perceive it in the news, but really your immediate, you know, your family, your home, all that stuff doesn't have that level or degree of craziness. And so we just need to flush that out somewhat. Aloes or the assemblage point on those areas should help that. You know, it should also put you in a place to where you're able to go deeper into sleep. And now if it feels like it's really, really overwhelming at some point, I'd use marjoram and just inhale it. Like it doesn't even have to be a pattern. Just keep start inhaling the marjoram and it will kind of pull you out of that and help you to go a little bit deeper. 
it will transmute some of those things in the body. <laughs> but I think the aloes or the assemblage point should be your go-to thing. Thank you so much. Um, and thank you for that explanation. Because I know it's not mental, but it, it makes sense when you talk about it in the nervous system. Yeah. Well, like, here's here's the thing with with, like, we think of the um, mental body as just being activity in the brain, but we have activity in the gut and we have activity in what they call the root brain, which is tied to the sex chakra. It's not the root chakra, but that is more of like your instinctive responses to the environment. And um, your your mental activity is a byproduct of all three. It's not just one. And so some of the stuff that's happening is not just things in your head. You know, like if you think about it, like the brain is like your thoughts. The 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 second brain or the brain in the gut is like like empathy or how it how things make you feel. And then the the root brain done in the sex chakra is basically like instinctive responses or like what you would call like being triggered or things of that nature, where you're just kind of reacting to things in the environment. It's not about sex. It's about just perceiving things in the environment. And um, do we get triggered? Do Is there an opportunity? Is there, you know, whatever it is, what am I attracting? Like, you know, that kind of stuff. And all of those make up our, our uh, mental aspects. And even within the blood, there is a kind of a mental reflective property that is in the bloodstream. It's not necessarily in the mind. You know, esoterically, if you look at what we would call the ego, is not in the mind. It's actually in the bone marrow. You know, it's it's all the different practices that do uh, blood purifications in, in different ways. What they're trying to do is they're trying to purify the blood and they're trying to purify the, the bone marrow. So it changes the mental faculties. And our mind is more of a byproduct of things rather than the one calling the shots. You know, it's more of this accumulation of all these different aspects that's being processed and so, and so um thank you for that clarification I yeah go like it's not always like oh, i'm grinding on this it's like your whole body is reacting in different different ways and you're you're processing it up there and and so the more that you kind of unwind some of that um the the more that that will change and it's not always things in your head it, it um doing the organs of blood purification doing the arms and legs has a big impact on the bone marrow that's why we do it a lot and um, in your meditation practice storing things in the navel and the navel minor you know the secondary navel will also have an impact on the bone marrow and um, even doing long, slow, deep breathing with your awareness on the, the navel will have an impact as well. And, and so you can even fall back on some of those kinds of practices where if you're really feeling it, you can, you know, do a little bit of meditation or prayer and then put your awareness on the navel and just like breathe, uh, do long, slow, deep breathing with your awareness on the navel and it will shift. Um, I always find that to be, it works, but it's slow. And I usually personally feel like I don't have patience for this. I go to the organs of blood purification and the arms and legs and open it up that way. Um, it moves the energy faster, but um, uh, storing it in the navel is a long, like uh, steady approach. Thank you so much. You've given me yeah. a lot work with here okay let, let me know how that goes too by the way if we need to make an adjustment 
you know, I have things also that I don't always put on the site or something. Um, I always have little things that we can throw at it that might not be something that's some you have in a kit or something. Will do. Um, thanks again.